Hello, welcome to another episode. This is part two of my Vintage Toy Restoration Series. In this video, I'll be restoring a vintage toy slot machine from the Waco Toy Company. This toy dates around 1972 and 1974. My family has actually been the original owners of this toy since that time. The fancy name you see there written on the screen is the actual name that appears on the box. And speaking of the box, we still have it. Here's a short clip of what it looks like. So this is the original box that the toy slot machine came in, 1972-1974 um, or so. But as you can see, it's got a lot of tape wear and storage wear. And yes, that box has seen better days, but now it's time to get started. Okay, so once you turn the unit upside down, you're going to find two Phillips screws. And fasten those. And here's the second one. Okay, now to pull the unit apart, there's two tabs on the bottom. You have to apply pressure on the black tray and then pull back on the red portion to separate the two pieces. Do it carefully and it'll look like a V as you pull it apart. Apply the pieces side by side, careful of the wires. Okay, so once you have this apart, uh, this is the motor. It sits in a little metal housing here on the side. Now this um, spindle or the shaft has a, a, a gear on it which I had already taken off which I'm going to demonstrate that later. Again I had been working on this before I decided to do the video so but any seasoned person who works on stuff or if you're new it's pretty obvious what you have to do. I mean the rubber band has to come off. This is not the original rubber band. Um, the other one had broke I guess years ago which is just the regular rubber band but I think there's a better replacement. Um, I think the rubber bands that you use for cassette tape decks, I haven't researched that yet. I'm going to look into that and cover that later in the video. That's probably going to be more durable than some over-the-counter or uh, some run-of-the-mill rubber band. But um, <clears throat> this stays on. So the motor is in here. And this sha this um, pulley, it doesn't have gears. It's just a pulley. It, uh, it comes off. Let's see if that's in the video. And I'm going to demonstrate how to do it because it's on there very tight and you have to pry it off because I don't have a, a gear pinion um, extractor thing, whatever it's called. So I'm going to um, demonstrate that later, how I did it. I found a video that explained how to do it. So I'm just going to keep that in a bag. I want to zoom in here. Um, actually, before you remove the motor, you're going to have to desolder the positive and negative wires to the motor. Um, the orange wire here is the positive end that was further in the back here. And again, I've had this out before, and then it's an extended red wire that comes down here to the battery compartment where the 2D batteries are. It's on the negative side. Um, I'm not sure. It was, uh, I think I had to replace the wire. That's why it's not black like it, you typically find it. But yeah, you have to desolder these wires first. I found it easier to do that before you remove the motor. Because I'm going to have to push down the tabs and then drop the motor down in through here. Okay, so I'm going to drop the motor out down through here. Once you untwist these pegs, just push them down through their slots. Apply a little pressure there. It's never the same way twice here. I've done this a few times. So the motor just simply drops out from under there. Got the metal housing that it sits in, U shaped. So, and don't leave it dropped in there. So, yeah, that's what that goes to. And your new motor is going to sit right in there. So simple. Okay, so now we have to move on to uh, putting in the motor inside. Okay, so what I've done is I went ahead and soldered the positive side already to this motor. Again, as I explained in one of my other videos, I'm working with these small. Uh, can around motors is the side with the vents is the negative side and the way this was is the positive side was nearest the uh, the wheels so I decided to come in from the inside with the wire to keep it away from the spinning wheels so when it's sitting in there it's you know it'll be away from them I'm going to install the motor and then solder in the negative side um, I just think it'll be easier that's kind of how I took it out um, I'm thinking maybe I don't need to do that. I could probably put in the put that in now actually. I think I might just do that here. Okay, 
Okay, right now I have the positive and negative uh, leads soldered to the motor. And uh, what you can see down here is a mechanism that actually activates the motor. There's two metal contacts when the handle's pulled. Um, but what I did is I put the D batteries in the compartment over here. And here I'll show you. Obviously there's a back door there, pretty self-explanatory. So when you touch these two contacts, you can probably hear the motor move. So you know your connection right there. Let me get a good shot there. Just push the top metal. I'll get a better shot later, but you can hear the motor running, so you know you did the, uh, the work correctly. All right, it's pretty simple actually. So you get the metal housing. This is that housing that the motor sits in. It's, like I said, this stuff's pretty straightforward. This isn't overly complicated, especially for any seasoned person. It's more to show people, uh, of course, that want to have one of these own them maybe want to fix it maybe want to sell it on ebay uh, that's what i've done with some of our old stuff i just i replaced the motors and all of our tomi toys they were just old okay so i gotta bring this in here uh, hold on but once you have the housing in so when i get a pliers or something pull up on the tab a little I'm just gonna bend mine straight over okay it almost fell out there I'll push them underneath pull up on it make sure it's snug so you can bend it over bend the pin over and or the tab rather give it a push down or use flat tip whatever works well for you okay so I'll get a close up of that. What remains to be done is that you have to take the pulley, uh, this pulley here that came off and uh, needs to go back uh, onto the uh, shaft here of the motor. Um, however, this one is uh, sits on here loosely where the original motor shaft was designed for this. It was under really snug and I'm going to show you later how do you get that off. But I waited to do this last because that's going with uh, Loctite. Or you could probably solder it on there because it's how easily it moves. But I waited because um, you want to get the rubber band on there and you want to make it sure they're lined up. And uh, again, I'm not going to keep this rubber band on here. This thing's not stable. Um, I'm uh, going to research cassette player bands. I think are more durable. You just have to find the right size that has enough tension on it. Okay, so as I noted, I went ahead and got some Loctite. I think it works best for these kind of things. Um, just work quickly because once you put a drop of that on there and get the pulley set, it starts wow. drying very quickly. Okay. I could barely move the pulley within like 5-10 seconds. Sorry about the blurry shot there. I guess it lost focus when I was working. But uh, I put the rubber band around the pulley to just keep things aligned while it dried. And I gave it a good 20 minutes before I even ran a test. Okay, so while the Loctite was drying, I started work on the battery terminals. Um, they need to be replaced. I was only going to do the one I noted here in this photo on the top because it was a, a quarter inch or so flat brass. But I need a half inch to fit in there snug and match the one on the bottom. Um, the I guess the wrong size had been used because the original one had been corroded. The bottom one was corroded. I started cleaning it. As I explained later in the video, uh, it got weak and it broke the tip. And so I just made a brand new one for that too. So as you'll see, I ended up replacing both of them with half inch flat brass. Uh, it worked very well. Very, very malleable, easy to work with. Here's a quick shot showing the half inch solid brass flat bar that I purchased. Desoldered, and uh, we start shaping it. All right, get that out of there. Yes, my soldering iron is something to be desired. I will get that. Uh, need to get a new one. All right, we don't need this so. Come right out easy. Okay, I took out the other terminal. Um, this thing's really corroded, needs cleaned. 
and um, well actually it'll make it easier because then I can match this up as a pattern and get this other one cut to size because um, the, the hole narrows and then I can bend it over um, bend the middle over it's pretty malleable pretty easy to cut with just a regular pair of scissors but this needs clean and decorroded so I think vinegar and some scrubbing is going to work on that I'm cutting this to match the original one like because it has to come kind of to a T so it'll fit down in there because then you're going to solder the wires to this tip here so I just need to bend these uh, bend the metal or the brass over okay so what I've done is I'm, I'm pretty much uh, I am done making the new contact over here um, this is obviously the new one I try to match it with the other one I sort of did a freehand I marked it, I made a little bit of a trace or a, a pattern, but I would suggest putting the original one on top and making some, drawing some lines. But uh, most part, it fits in very well. It makes contact with the batteries. I just, you know, when once it's soldered, it'll work. Okay, so I decided to make a quick clip of how I actually went about making the battery terminals with the flat brass. I know people need it for ideas or they're curious. Um, so I didn't want to use metal needle nose pliers because the edges are really sharp. It tends to scratch up the brass. I wanted more of a curvature to the terminal like regular battery terminal does. So I found this uh, level with a plastic uh, beveled edges to it. And I was able to just start shaping the brass around it um, and gradually made like a curvature to it like you would find on a normal battery terminal. And it was actually quite easy. and. Uh, didn't take very long, just sort of worked it around and pushed down the corners. So that made a nice curvature for it. Then I had to take scissors because I didn't want the pointy edges. And I used the scissors just to round out the edges, sort of cut the corners off and give it that battery terminal look. And uh, then I had to cut the tip out, you know, so it would go through the plastic uh, battery case there. And that was pretty much it. So I hope that helps. Okay, I'm ready to install the new uh, copper terminal. Again, you know, the one I made. And um, so you're going to bring it in through here. Sticks out just far enough here. I, my camera can't zoom in too much, it gets blurry. Um, but uh, what you have to do is you have to bend, bend it down just a little so it holds it in place. And you can uh, begin to re-solder the wires onto it. There, it doesn't come back out. It's actually pretty sturdy. So, all right, let's solder the wires on. I okay, decided to make a, <coughs> two new connectors. The other one broke after I cleaned it. It was just all the corrosion. It weakened it. So they're back soldered. Uh, there was some damage here from some other work. I don't know. You can see the new terminals are in there. I'm going to put this back together. I want to demonstrate. It's actually rather easy. You have both halves. Make sure all the wires are where you want them. So the, the tabs are on the bottom of the snap, so you start upside down V and then you just bring the halves, you get the, there's tabs up here and you just line everything up and uh, boom, it goes right together. Okay, so now it's time to take your new motor for a test drive. The slot machine comes with about 60 slugs and the directions recommends about 30 go into the machine because you need them in there for your jackpot payouts. And they just load into the top machine. Pretty simple. So when you're ready to start, uh, you put your one slug in, you pull the handle, and you press the red buttons in sequential <laughs> order, one, two, and three. And I got really lucky on the first pull and got three bars. It just happened that way. It wasn't scripted. I got lucky. And um, it knows what to dispense and pay out. The payouts are increments of uh, 5 and 10, which I show here. It automatically knows what to dispense. There's five slugs, and then if you hit 10, it'll give you the extra five. 
So pretty simple. Um, bars, bells, and cherries pay out, and the chart on the front of the machine shows you what the payouts are. So I want to show a little quirk on this. When you press the first button there, you'll notice the first two wheels are stopping. They're not supposed to do it. The machine's old, and I can't figure out why it's doing it. But you still have to press number two because it makes the first five coin pay out. If you get 10, the number three button will pay you the other five coins in this example right here. So it paid me 10 slugs. So um, I hope you enjoyed this video. It was a lot of fun to make, and I enjoyed repairing this machine. Uh, it runs much smoother and it's a lot quieter. So I'll be working on more vintage toys here in the coming weeks. So if you like this stuff, subscribe to my channel, please. And uh, thank you for watching.